All right, so this is the very latest. You're seeing this first. 10 o'clock advisory, 65 mile per hour winds, motion west northwest at three. The location 28.6 and 91.0 west. So it again, very, very slow. Relatively speaking, it hasn't moved a whole lot. And that center of circulation, though, what has been very fascinating or frustrating, however you want to look at it, is just so broad. It never did tighten up. It never got very well organized at all. Thunderstorm development, convection, certainly trying to get better developed around that center because with the center of the storm right there, boy, that convection is trying to get going near that center. You've also got that little uh, plume of moisture on the eastern side of it that looks like it may be trying to rotate around the center as well. So it is definitely trying to strengthen, although at least as of this observation, and I was also looking at the reconnaissance from the Air Force. They couldn't find anything greater than 65 mile an hour winds, and that, at least from what I could see, the reconnaissance was not indicating anything below 993. So though it looks to be strengthening, Based on their observations, they could not really find any strengthening. So a very, very slow motion at the moment. The position keeps it at about 120 miles to the west southwest now of the mouth of the Mississippi River. So it still looks like it's moving more west than north right now. We want it to get inland as fast as possible. That may come at around 1 a.m. or so, but here is the latest track. Hurricane Hunter or Hurricane Center still forecasting it to strengthen to a hurricane just before making landfall early tomorrow morning and then continuing inland. As we've been talking about, this is a very unique situation because we're almost not worried about whether it's a tropical storm or a hurricane at landfall. We really don't care. It's still going to be a big rainmaker and it looks like the track really hasn't changed all that much. And I really don't think unless something very strange happens with the storm, we are not likely to see any kind of wobble one way or another. Maybe a slight change west or east from this center line and the track itself, but I really don't see anything very dramatic. And as I mentioned, this being such a unique storm, we're not really worried about it becoming Hurricane Barry or just Tropical Storm Barry at landfall. It is still going to be a big rainmaker, and that still is our greatest threat. Although the models have been trending with more of that heavy rainfall, and again, the farther west it goes, the better for us. And that really has been, although albeit slow, that really has been the trend of Barry to go more west than north. So keeping it going as far west as possible before making more of a north northwest and then eventually northerly turn is better for us. You don't wish this upon anyone, but we want to see it get out of here as soon as possible. So again, if you are just joining us right now uh, before the top of the hour, the very latest from the hurricane uh, center winds of 65 miles an hour. So that has not changed motion west northwest at three. Relatively speaking, it's not going anywhere and the pressure is at 993, so it has not strengthened at all. They're still forecasting it to do so through the overnight period, but that window of opportunity is quickly closing again at 10 o'clock. You're going to see this probably nearing land, if not making landfall at 1 a.m. And then after that, moving inland and continuing to fall apart. Good news for us. Bad news for us is we still have to deal with all of this moisture and rainfall that will be surging our way. What may be helping us out is even though that drier air not nearly as apparent as it had been, it still looks like this almost little broad circulation right here maybe helping to create enough kind of a wind shear to still prevent those storms from rotating and wrapping around the center of the storm. So as long as that center doesn't get better organized, Barry is going to struggle. And as we've been talking about that window of opportunity of any further strengthening is quickly closing. Still a lot of rainfall associated with it. We're starting to see some of the heavier storms now as you kind of follow the, the trajectory of these and quite a bit of lightning. So certainly indicating some heavier storms developing in the Gulf waters. You kind of follow the trajectory of these, maybe lower Terrebonne, but also more in the direction of Morgan City. So may start to see some of those heavier storms in the next several hours going into the maybe after midnight hour of those heavier rainstorms or heavier uh, uh, clusters of storms moving over the Morgan City area. And again, it's going to be Morgan City areas west that are likely going to see more of that uh, potential heavy amount of rain where the 10 to 20 is possible in those locations. 
Starting to get a heavier band here from Galliano, just to the south of Des Almonds. So far, let's keep our fingers crossed, nothing severe. We have not seen any rotation within any of these storms. So at the moment, we have not seen any kind of tornadic development. That's been great. Now we are starting to see, though, as you've noticed on the radar trends, the frequency of these showers and th some thunderstorms has certainly been increasing. That's going to be what happens through the overnight period and going into tomorrow. And as we get into the day tomorrow, we're going to start to lose more of those more scattered showers we saw for the better part of the day to the more heavy band setting up and the real threat to us is not going to be from the deluge of just all over rainfall. It's going to be from those bands and where precisely they set up because you look at this model. This would have uh, more storms kind of moving over the Bluxy area and if they just continue moving over those locations for any length of time. These are going to be very efficient rainfall makers, and they could easily drop two to four or more inches of rainfall in a very, very short period of time. That would lead to some flooding. Flooding widespread doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Localized flooding, absolutely, which is why we are under a flash flood watch through Sunday morning. Here are the rainfall totals. Again, as far as totals go, the models have been dropping back, but we still are not out of the woods for those bands setting up and dropping easily anywhere from four plus six inches of rainfall. Overall, it's probably going to be more likely a two to four, uh, maybe three to six inches of rainfall. The 10 plus that's going to be much farther to our west. Even the GFS model, which had really been bringing in those catastrophic type totals over us, has backed off significantly. Now we're not going to get a new model run for a little while now, but rainfall totals from the GFS through the day Saturday going into Sunday, four inches, five inches at 10 inches. That would be a bit excessive over even a couple of days, but this is not the catastrophic type rainfall that we could easily have seen. However, we still do have a high risk, a well, moderate risk on the scale from the Weather Prediction Center of flooding rains for the rest of the night tonight. And then as we get into tomorrow, that gets elevated to a high risk. So a four, a, a four of four risk for the excessive rains that would lead to flooding. Again, a lot more of the focus is going to be probably to our west, but the Weather Prediction Center does keep parts of our viewing area under that risk during the day. Tomorrow, as far as severe weather goes, we still have a chance of some tornadic storms. That chance gets spread out over a much larger area as we get into the day on Saturday. Winds have been brisk out of the east and southeast today, and they're going to continue to increase through the overnight period. Winds right now assist, or excuse me, gusting at about 60 miles an hour down at Port Fouchon and sustained winds of 45. As we go through the night, those winds are going to be increasing, maybe wind gusting up to around 70 miles an hour, 50 near near 50 mile an hour wind gusts in the city that will probably get some power lines down, perhaps some tree limbs down. That is when we may start to see some power outages going into early tomorrow morning. Hopefully, though, as the winds begin to diminish late Saturday and into Sunday, that will allow energy crews to begin going out there and making any repairs. So we're likely and very certain to see some of the uh, power outages. You always hope that it won't be the case, but with winds gusting like that or across even the city, you're likely going to see some tropical storm, or excuse me, storm surge watches are also going to be a big factor for us for the day tomorrow. And again, you may see some graphics that highlight entire parishes. It's not entire parishes. It's all the coastline and the shoreline. So like Pontchartrain and anything outside of the levee protection system where we could see anywhere from three to five feet, three to five feet in uh, more the uh, Biloxi Marsh in the Mississippi Sound, Lake Pontchartrain, th uh, three to five. Morgan City westward about the same and then maybe three to six during the day tomorrow with those strong southerly winds. Alex had just pointed this out and boy, this is great news for everyone that had been so worried about the Mississippi River. It has basically crested for now. It is falling and it's only forecasted to crest later in the night on Saturday into Sunday to just above minor flood stage. We've been there already and that really is not a big deal. As a matter of fact, most of this uh, spring season we have been hovering just below that number. So that 17.1 is not really a big deal and looks like those numbers will start to come down as we get more into Wednesday. A lot of that is because of the heavy rainfall that we are anticipating over the course of the weekend. Several rivers, though, uh, at risk of 
flooding on the north shore. We've already had pictures of some of those rivers flooding, such as the Chifuncta. A major flood is forecasted at Folsom as well as at Covington, with the crest not until the 14th and 15th, respectively. The Tangipahoa at Robert, a major flood is anticipated there. July 16th is the crest. The Tangipahoa at Kentwood, Bogafly at Camp Covington, both a moderate risk, both cresting on July 15th. And then elsewhere, the Bogafly at Boston Street, a moderate flood. July 15th is the crest there. The Bogachita at Bush, the Bogachita at Franklinton, both a moderate uh, flood risk or a moderate flood with the crest 17, uh, July 17th and 16th respectively. So here's our timeline for the rest of the night tonight. Winds are going to continue increasing more scattered storms, more scattered downpours. We may begin to start to see. We may begin to see some of those isolated tornadoes. Saturday morning, we're looking at strong winds, heavy rains, a few tornadoes and the storm surge suddenly becomes more of an issue. Saturday afternoon, ongoing flooding across the area, especially as those bands begin setting up and we may begin to see those band setting up perhaps just after daybreak. Windy, very heavy rainfall and the storm surge to contend with. So